We did get hit with the Chinese feather duster. I think. <laughs> yeah. Sp- spanked. We would get a little spanked. snack. <laughs> <laughs> Appetizer. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Not Your Asian Women podcast. I'm Christine Chang. I'm Shining. We want to talk about our mamas. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy issues not talked about enough. We'd be blaming daddies. It's time to blame the moms, too. <laughs> Just because you're a mother, it doesn't mean you're mothering. This is true. This is very true. What's your mom like? She, um... Her and I, we have good relationships now. We're like best friends. We talk about sex, all that shit, like pretty open. Um, But growing up, she was a young mother. She was only 25. And there were times she would, uh, she wouldn't beat me up or anything like that. She wasn't tiger mom. But uh, her used uh she used a lot of guilt trips i mean that's very chinese it's embedded in our culture (laughs) and she would say stuff like oh you do this will make me sad and uh i don't think it was vicious obviously It, it just that um and then her conflict style was avoidant she didn't stand up for herself I didn't have any role model of how to navigate through conflict. So that took me uh, a while into adulthood to learn that myself. But overall, we had a good relationship and even now better. What about you? That's good. I had a tiger mom growing up. And I'm talking the apex of tiger moms. When people meet her... When my dad saw the movie Devil Wears Prada for the first time, do you you know the CEO? She, he, he laughed. He's like, that's your mom. And he was laughing hysterically. So that that that's my mom. She was a businesswoman. She was tough. She was a very tough mom. Uh, so she came over here from Cambodia. Her and my dad got married. They started a company together. And the company had... Um, Six partners. My mom built the company with them, but they wouldn't make her a partner. It was my dad. She had to endure a lot of bullshit. And it's actually really impressive what she's done. I have a picture on my desk, and it's her in the 80s with her business attire, and she has her team behind her, black and white photo. And I freaking love that photo. I love that example that she set for us, that that's, I'm like, Oh, this is what it was an option for us. She was a CEO, so my sister and I could be a CEO. So we saw that example. Not not necessarily saying we had to become one, but it's an option versus I have a friend who he's married and he has kids and his wife is amazing. She's a stay-at-home mom, but he said honestly, I I want them to see some other options because uh it's two little girls like they were playing um like let's go to work and it's like I'm going to do mommy's job and She goes to make a sandwich, you know, so he was saying, like, I just want them to know that there's other options that they don't or they aren't limited to this role and they can choose what they want to do. And also the reality of like, he's like, I don't want them to feel like they're they're stuck in any way in case the guy's not like treating her right and things like that. And so my mom kind of raised us similarly, too, in in that way. And uh, I think. You learn the most from your parents by example, right? It's not exactly what they say, it's what they do. And I find myself doing little things that both my parents do, whether I like it or not, down to the body language things. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like mom or dad, like that's what they do. Yeah, so she she was a very good role model in that way of being independent, be capable, know how to take care of yourself, feel empowered. I'm very confident in the career um, aspect of my life but it that mindset kind of poured over into my personal life in a not so great way and my mom will admit she said she's like I'm not a good role model for you girls when it comes to romantic relationships and your personal life she admits that um, yeah so very critical it's a, it's a typical tiger mom accomplishment focused 
like do something. I was in gymnastics growing up. She made me play. I'm a very typical Chinese to like uh, violin and piano. Did you have to learn that? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and with music, there's ballet, everything. <laughs> just something like do something. But I think the violin and piano in in the Chinese culture is pretty popular. I hated it. There wasn't an ounce of me. Her thing was just try it. You know, just try it. But as a kid, I'm like, I knew what my interests were. And I, I felt unheard in many ways. I said, I don't like this. My sister was interested in it. I'm like, that's not me. And that's where the, uh, maybe I'm more Western in that way. I'm a very independent thinker. And I said, my thing was gymnastics and dance. I liked that. That's what I excelled at too. And, and that, amazing. She signed me up for it. And I got to do it. But she did. I'm, which is fair, you know, she's like, just try this other stuff. I did it for a few years, but I freaking, I hated it, I remember. So very um, accomplishment focused, very critical, very critical. So it made me think that things were never good enough. I was never good enough. So how does that manifest in romantic relationships? It was not good. I felt like I always had to prove myself. Because I always, you know, the little girl wants like to impress like your mom too. And she was really happy when we would get good grades, when we would get be number one on the podium at the, at the meets and stuff, you know, we got the applause from her. And so you, it kind of trained me to want to earn praise. And I had to learn, I had to really deconstruct that as <laughs> when I got to adulthood, um, I mean, from the way she was raised, they didn't really talk about emotions and things like that. So I didn't. That's common. Right. I, I just I didn't feel support in navigating conflict. My sister and I fought a lot growing up a lot. And I, I mean, the same with my parents, like they each had six siblings and you know, they would just go at it and you just fucking figure shit out on your own. You know, you just beat each other's asses. There was like none of that. And she. She worked a lot, so there we had all pairs growing up, um, or or live in nannies. I don't know what the name is. It's all pairs, right? Is that all pair? If they live in, I think it's all pair. Um, and I remember one of my earliest memories. I must have been two or three, and I was really close to you know wh whoever was our nanny at the time. And my mom got home and something upset me and I didn't run to my mom. I ran to the nanny for comforting. And I never asked my mom about that, like whether what she was feeling when I did that. But I remember being when I was like healing, I was teen, like bitter about that. Like, damn, bitch, you weren't even here for me. Right. Like resentful. And she was working like her as a refugee from Cambodia. Her mindset is survival. Right. And she and my dad built this business. They've made a lot of great money. It's really impressive. But that's where her mind was at, which I understand now as an adult. But as a kid, you know, there would be other moms that were way more involved in their kids' lives at school. You know, they would come to their performances. They would come, to, like, um, volunteer to be um, field trips, you know. And I'm like, mm. how nice that her mom's here. And I think I brought it up to my mom once, and she's like, She's like, well, her mom doesn't work, you know, like I do. I, and so I can't be there. They were never into PTAs, parent, teacher night, none of that. But we would be, I remember I would be so excited when it'd be open house or the few times they did show up. I'd be so happy. Like, mom, this is my artwork. This, I was so excited. And like in the gymnastics meets, if I knew she was there, I would even like try harder. Like I was like, oh, mom's in the audience. And so there's definitely like a ban a little bit like abandonment there. And it did, it poured over into um, my romantic relationship. It's not just the daddy, like the mommy, it was there. Like, oh wait, I'm mimicking one of these relationships. And some of them was like my mom. Yeah, and even though I've done so much healing work, you can see like it's still like the little kid in me. And so that's why when I, when they say like do healing work and like reparent yourself, I'm always like, what did the little girl need? How did she need to be spoken to? Because I, I find my internal um, talk to myself can be, and you even said it when you first met me, you're like, you're really hard on yourself. Because it's criticism. That's what I learned, like the criticism. You can do better. And it makes me excel in a lot of things. But at the same time, I'm just like, 
now with like dance class, if I like don't get the choreo or whatever, I'm like, oh wait, what did I want to hear as a kid? Like, like good for you. You showed up today and a lot of people are afraid to suck and it's just, you're not stuck here. Just keep going. So to learn to uh, communicate nicer to myself. And I don't think my mom is not, her heart is very kind. She's very um, cold and strong, but sensitive. You see it in her that she always, she actually has more empathy than me with a lot of people where I'm kind of a little hard and I'm just like, I don't feel bad. And she, you can see it in her, but her way of like soothing you or helping you can come off very like, she'll be like, you're not good at ironing. Let me do it for you. <laughs> damn. You know? I'm like, is that necessary? But that's her way of saying, I love you. Let me help you. You know, it was, she was never, that talk of that gentle talk is not familiar to her. But I think she's learned with my, with her grandkids, I have a niece and nephew. She's different with them. And that's kind of common. You hear that, right? Like, damn, we got our asses beat. And to look at them now, like giving chocolate bars to the kids and, and so nice. And she notices things now. Um, my nephew is a little bit more sensitive. And then she she went to, I think it was like his Halloween parade, some kind of parade. And she said, she's like, I can tell Adam was looking for us in the audience. And he was so happy when he saw us. And she, yeah, so she didn't, yeah. So she, she sees it now. She didn't realize back then what an impact that can have on a child. And um, did you ever have a conversation with her about that? Um, we've had like here and there, but I don't think I've ever because I understand that it's not I don't expect like everyone to get everything right. Am I, I don't we, P and I don't even have kids. I'm like, am I going to do everything right as a mom? Like some things you just don't know until later. And she has admitted before like, oh, yeah, because I, I just didn't know then, you know, and I do have. I understand that. I have grace with that. Um, she did punishment style Chinese moms. Like we did get hit with the um, with Chinese feather duster. I think. <laughs> yeah. Sp spanked. We would get a little spanked. snack. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, and appetizer. My <laughs> <laughs> the so, belts and slippers hasn't came yet. <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, we definitely got spanked. She was the disciplinarian. We were scared of her. My dad was the nice patient one. Strong Coffee Company, what do you think? This is perfect for lazy bitches like me. You can just pour the powder in and put hot wow wow. You wouldn't believe it. My eyes were smaller than this. But after that, I'm awake. <laughs> Use code. Oh, yeah. What's our code? Not your Asian women at yeah. checkout for a nice little discount. Enjoy your new crack. Just, who was the disciplinarian between your parents? Different style. My mom was more guilt trip. She would sit there and cry and then make me feel the worst when I unintentionally did something bad. And my dad, he, he wasn't there. I don't really have a good crystal clear memories of him until later they got divorced and got back together and with in that period my dad showed up a lot for me once a week he will give me allowance yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought at, at that time I thought that was the best relationship ever I don't ever get to see my dad whenever I see him he just hand me money what <laughs> What more could a kid ask for? Now, obviously, it, it has an underlying impact of my intimate relationships. But like you said, um, they didn't know. Right. Either way, you're going to miss out on something. There's no perfect uh, parenting. And if you, mom, like you said, uh, that stay-at-home mom that always did show up, but maybe later on the kids will want resent that, oh, if she was stronger, set up business sense, and we would have a different type of role model. Or so you, you never know. That's the thing. And now we have to learn how to mothering ourselves. When you said that, oh, like same. 
when I feel so hard on myself or critical of things or won't allow myself to enjoy my accomplishment because that was what my dad said all the time. For the rare cases when I did do good, and I was so happy. Oh, I, you know, I got this and I did this. And the first thing my dad would say was, "Don't be too happy. Don't be too proud. Be humble. Calm down." And that had carried on to my adulthood. That when I do accomplish something. I don't want to acknowledge it,、mm. and I feel like, oh, this is nothing. Like you shouldn't be brag about this. You're not. You're not allowed to. And it took me a, a oh, even even I, you know, like I came to the United States when I was a teen. I didn't speak lick of English, and I graduated with honor. I did、uh, I many different jobs to banking, investment, and marketing. These are all accomplishments, and I never took a second to look back and acknowledge it. And I always, when I hear people say, "Oh, you know, immigrant story where did this and that," I'm like, everybody does it. Like, what's there to brag about? But now I understand. I give myself like, oh my god, looking back, like, wow, I did that. I made friends. I started a new life. I did all these adventures without anybody's help, and I didn't even speak this language. And how far I had come! Even it didn't take my my dad to acknowledge it until some of his friends and some of、uh, our cousins came here, but give up. They couldn't stand the loneliness of it. They couldn't learn in. Uh, learn English well enough, or couldn't really find their clicks to、uh, fit in. So they just most of them just went back to China, and not until a few years back, my dad acknowledged it. Like, oh, oh, you did a thing in your life, huh? I'm like, damn, bitch! It took Steve, that's little Jimmy, as like bitch, weak as bitch, acknowledge you.、Uh, That you acknowledge that how hard I had overcome all of these obstacles, and we were able to laugh it off now. But、um, and like we said, like comparing was the only way they know. Oh gosh, that is it's like emotionally. Is that mostly abusive? It's it's I don't mind it's no 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 I don't think that's the controlling right term I I don't know but it's some bullshit <laughs> yeah my my mom did that a few times too when she would like after she came back from like say high school college reunion she would be like、uh, while cooking she would say stuff like oh why couldn't you be like this and that and then、uh, her daughter went to this school <laughs> that school and did this and that. Uh, I wish you could be like that. She would, like, she wasn't a like you know hard talk or you know tiger mom style, but in a way, it hurts as just as much. And I feel so bad that I couldn't please her. I couldn't make her proud. And even till now, it's very hard for them to say love and I'm proud of you. They show in different ways. Now I'm more mature. I understand it's just culturally different, and they show differently. And to be honest, like they they did send me a lot of money, so、like. <laughs> that's how they show love sometimes, <laughs>、yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> they they took care of me financially, so <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna sit here and bitch about. Oh, you know, I wanted more. I can have my cake and eat it too. I understand that.、Um, they are. So yeah, that was that was that that was my mom. And one thing that、um, I wish she would say more was、uh, words of affirmation. She like because of the beauty standards were different in China back then.、Um, she would jokingly say that, "Oh, you were ugly. You were really ugly. I was baby." Like I, I didn't know. Like e- even I was like I was in a preschool or elementary school. I understood words, 
she would say, oh, when you were first born, you were ugly. They do. They love words like that. Ugly, fat. Yeah. And then uh, I didn't. I, I always thought I was very ugly. Oh. Yeah. I didn't think I was like in, 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 into adulthood like this in underlying insecurity is strong. That voice that, oh, you're disappointment. You're not good enough. You're ugly. People, you know, uh, you're you're not good enough. All these really affect your confidence. It takes a battle. It it's a battle to overcome those voices in our heads to accomplish things. It's like it's the create the working itself. The grind itself is hard enough. Uh, on top of that, you have to battle that voice. Oh, it's the internal battle. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah, uh, Pete and I went to, it, I forgot, it's called Designer Con. So it's a lot of, do you know like Kid Robot? Like Japanese, like little, they have like different paintings, a lot of artists that create cute uh, things. And so there's a good amount of Asian creators there because we like to collect those little things. And I noticed there was a trend where there was a lot of brands that would do posters and illustrations saying things about feelings it's okay to have feelings, all this. Because maybe they're like parents now and you just see how it swung the other way. Like, whoa, wow, I don't want my kids to in, you know, go through the same thing I did. I want them to know that it's okay and have language around what they're feeling and be able to communicate that with me. Because for us, <laughs> for most of us, our generation from an Asian upbringing, it's, that's not their strong suit, okay? There has to be a balance. I mean, that's yeah, true. People joke about bringing back beating up your kids. No, there's there is. I mean, I see some of the kids running around now. I'm like, this kid needs some consequences. He clearly has not had any. Right. So it is a balance. But like you said, like, I don't I would not change my childhood. I would not change. I don't want a different mom at all. Like, I love the influence she's had on my life. I joke, but I'm. I, it's, I think it would be true. Like if I did, just say she, I didn't have her as a role model, as a businesswoman, I think I'd be like hippy dippy skipping around a field. Like I don't know what I would be doing. I think I would be in unhealthy relationships getting taken advantage of because I'm naturally a softer person as a kid. I was so shy, so timid. And she taught me to be stronger. And so I would not change anything. And I remember my mom she always like wants to like improve. And I showed her my photography website. And then she, of course, has things to say <laughs> about it. Not, the first thing isn't like, oh my gosh, wow, this, like your new work looks great. It's just more criticism, right? How it could be better. This, this market, da, 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 da. And then at that time, my intern was with me. And I remember feeling so annoyed getting, because you know, those little things just stack up. I'm like, there she goes again. And then he said, you know, you're really lucky to have that because she's giving you guidance. And I really wish I had business guidance from my parents growing up. Oh. And I don't. So that she's like, he's like, that's one of the reasons I'm interning with you because I actually want to learn these things. And it shifted my perspective of, yeah, I am really lucky to have this. And you never know like how someone's going to take something. Like you said, like you could be a stay at home mom. And I actually do know people who their mom was a stay at home mom. And they ended up kind of resenting it. Like I, she had nothing going on outside of us. And I saw like after we left, she had nothing going on. And I don't want to be that. And so they became super business people, right? And I'm, I'm sure as you mature and get older, you probably see like, oh, she just like we were her world and she loved us. That is a great thing. But it's, it's different for everyone. Like Pete, his mom was stay at home while she was raising him. And he said he loved it. He's like, it was really nice coming home and having her there. Like you're you're really lucky that that you had that. But yeah, it's all um there there is a lot of healing work to do. I, I think if you have no issues with your parents, like you're That's really, funny. really lucky. <laughs> or you're being fake, like it's the phony, you know, like no, it's very surface level. No, everything's fine, everything's fine. Perspective is a bitch. Um I went to this, uh, my husband's friend's uh, party, and they're older. They have a couple of uh, teenagers, 
and it was Christmas or some type of a holiday formal dinner, and、uh, the the son didn't wake up until right before dinner, like six p.m. Rolled off of bed, came downstairs, yawning, didn't say nothing, no hello, no eye contact. First thing that came out of that bitch's mouth was, "Mom, where's dinner?" And she got up and then served him a plate. Dude, I saw that and I was like, "God damn! If I pulled this off, my parents will beat the fuck out of me, verbally and physically." This would not be allowed in Asian household. We don't give a fuck if you're forty.、Uh, I mean,、um, we don't give a fuck if you're like you know in、uh, have a flu or or physically ill. Somebody that important, or I mean, this holiday important dinner. You you came at least say hello, then you go do what you do, and you need to clean up and all that. And no way you could talk to your mom like, "Hey, do this." Oh my gosh! Can you? Like, oh god, I hate seeing it. When I see kids that have no discipline and no respect for their parents and elders, oof. I because I used to hate my parents drag me to places or drag me out of bed to、uh, say hello to these people, but it taught me manner. It's good manners. People like to be acknowledged. So yeah, perspective is a bitch. <laughs> Totally, totally. I love like the skills that my mom taught us, like how to. Because she was a businesswoman, how do you speak on the phone? Because a lot of kids would call. Because we would have to call each other's houses. This was before cell phones and pagers, and say, you know, talk to the parent. Hi, Mrs. Smith. Is Johnny home? And my mom. A lot of kids would say, "Hi, is Christine there?" And my mom would be like, "Who the fuck is your parents?" You. Know, that's how you talk to someone. Is Christine there? And she's like, "Don't you fucking talk like that." She's like, "When you call someone, you introduce yourself and then ask for who you would like to speak to." So when we would call her office, I would say, "Hi, this is Christine. May I speak to Eng, please?" And she's like, "Everyone would compliment me when you girls would call the office that you were professional and you know that you had respect. You knew how to talk to people." And、uh, she definitely taught us excellence, like from every little thing of.、Um, They had a a lab where they would bottle some things, and of course, they would make us work there as kids, <laughs> like during the summer. And I'm really glad that they did. And you know, we would like stick these labels on the bottle, and my mom would check us, and she would say, "That's crooked." You know, she's like, "If you have a product, you want it to be excellent." She's like, "Look at what you're doing, and you try your best, and you put it on straight." And I remember one time my best friend in middle school, like she came with me, and we were there. I'm like, "Do you want to help me? I'm gonna do this for my parents." And then she starts just sticking it like really crooked, and I I corrected her. I was like, "Hey, I'm like the labels need to be straight. They can't sell it if it's like this." And I just realized she never had her mom would like would not correct her on things like that, right? And somebody might be like, "What the fuck? That stuff doesn't matter." But I like that my mom. Told me to be mindful. She's like, when you send an email, anything, she's like, check what you wrote. Don't be sloppy. Yeah, don't be sloppy about it and just send it. Check all your work. And so that's where Asian excellence comes from, right? <laughs> like those little things. And I think it also comes from not wanting to look bad. She admits she's like, I have a thing where I'm like paranoid of looking bad to other people, and I care too much what they think because my father, your grandpa, would always be like. To talk about you, make sure, and to this day, she still, even though she's aware of it, she's like, I just have it in me that, you know, I care, I care a lot, and <laughs> we got in so much trouble once. <laughs> when I think I was in first grade, and a girl in class, I think her mom asked, like, Hey, I don't, I don't think I enjoyed hanging out with this girl very much. She's like, Hey, would you like to come over, and then you guys, girls can play. I'm a kid, so I'm honest, and I say, "Oh, our favorite cartoon is on at 3:30, so I can't come over." And then she, that woman called my mom to tell her, like, you know, I asked the girls to come over, and this is what what one of them said that they wanted to watch their cartoon, so they didn't want to come over. My mom came home from the office ready to fucking swing. She's like, "Which one of you girls said this?" And it was me. <laughs> But I'm like, "She did." <laughs> and we got we got spanked, but it was because we made her look bad. 
that she was furious. She was furious. That, w- that was my dad's thing too. That taught me there are time and place to behave. He was when the limited time he spent with me, he was nice and uh, tolerant, and yeah, more lenient. But when I, one thing he did punish me about was uh, when we're out, if I didn't address his acquaintances or I was acting naughty with the uh, more formal dinner or events like that, he would not have it at all. Stand still or don't shake your leg, address people, make eye contact. Or, you know, like, don't, don't fidget. You got to behave like lady. And these manner, he taught me like great values in that. So, and then when, when like at home, he would say, oh, you can, you know, at home, you can be more casual, but outside, watch your tone, how you behave. I know like a lot of people listening to this, like, oh, that's, you know, patriarchy, toxic masculinity. When you enter real world, they are events or places you're going to go and it will teach you how to behave, not just, you know, ladylike, men too. You notice like men that are just behaving like an asshole. Nobody wants to be around. It doesn't matter how big of a title he has. He's he's a jerk. You don't want your kids or yourself to, you know, behave like that. So there are benefits to certain disciplines from your parents when you're growing up. It teaches you manner. If you didn't get it from childhood at home, the world would slap teach you. you quick. That's why I do I don't when I see kids who either are too sheltered or they live in a bubble or no discipline, all I can think is, well, that adjustment going into the real world is going to be like a slap in the face because maybe your parents are okay with that, but not everyone's going to treat you like your parents. People, honestly, they don't give a shit about you. Like you really need to take care of yourself. And it is a wake up call. People learn when they learn, Right. And when I said, by the way, no one gives a shit about you, of course, like there's, you know, you make your friends and there are genuine relationships. So it really like you have to take care of yourself. Like the world is not forgiving at all. And there are consequences. They were real world, just like you said. And the consequence could be you don't have any friends. If there's a pattern, none of your friendships last long. And you're, you won't have a you. career. No one would want to work with you. That too. Sometimes I wonder with people who are chronically late, like things like that. It would drive me nuts, number one, because my time is valuable. So I, with all my friends, I have communicated that. And I understand when some things happen. And some, if it's a barbecue or whatever, it's loose. But if it's just, if I feel like my time's being wasted, if we say a time, and you habitually come like, I, I have better things than sit around and wait for you. Anyways. <laughs> True. Uh, so, so if someone's habitually late, sometimes I'm like, how do you have a job? And they, that's the thing is either they're freelance or they, they can't charge above a certain amount. I'm like, because you don't give that service where you can charge that much. Yeah. And these younger generation would say a uh, certain condition caused them to be late. And it should be consider- considered into like um, late or something like HR should consider ADHD as a disability and should have a, a leeway into showing up late. <laughs> the I'm like, yo, everybody has some type of a condition. I have ADHD, but I know adequacy, cons- being considerate. And that is something my parents taught me. And I appreciate that. Even though at the time I hated it. So, yeah. yeah I, I, when people are inconsiderate that's one of my triggers I can't stand it like the world does not revolve around you and if you don't like that a job doesn't have tolerance for lateness then go find another one then yeah like 
digital notepad or something or start your own business. You can be the boss whenever. <laughs> That's why when people fight for certain things of like, oh my God, they like make us wear this or that. I'm like, that's the uniform. If you don't want to wear it, you can go work somewhere else. I don't know. I'm like, why did they have to cater, <laughs> cater to you? You see what uniform they're wearing when you apply for the job. If you don't want it, <laughs> don't, you know, then you don't have to work there. Or make yourself so valuable, you can't be replaced. But until then, you might have to do free work. You might have to do a lot of things that you can't bitch about. Oh, yeah. oh being entitled, oh it's God. not its not attractive at all. You will have no friends. No one would want to work with you. Yeah, that's what I see in general with the younger generations, which I know not all of you are like this. But I, I do think they do have more options than we did. But the attitude, a lot of them, they don't have the willingness and the hunger to want to learn. Like whenever I would intern, it's because you want to learn and you're clear on your vision. I'll do anything it takes to get there. And this is valuable to me. Now they're like, it, they have a lot of rules. Like, no, I don't like the energy. I don't like, you know, I, I think as long as it doesn't. It's create... a mental health day. Yes. Now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking nuts. I'm all about balance, you know, it's, I think it's swung too far the other way that the world does not cater. Not you want every single person to cater to your to what makes you feel comfortable. I think it's a human depopulation. It's <laughs> vetting <laughs> those people will not recreate, and this genetics won't pass on. Yeah, I just think, I mean, if you're, if you too go through life, to, yeah, if you, that's too true. sensitive, too weak. That's true. That's a really good point. I just think if, if someone's yeah entitled, like going through life, it's, it's going to be tough. And at some point you're. It's going to be very easy for some that have the adaptability drive. Yes. To learn, to fit with the ever changing technology. And there will be some that. All they do is complain. You don't want to change and too sensitive to try, too anxious to have the courage to take a risk. Then it's, it's a natural <laughs> depopulation <laughs> process. Well, back to mommy parenting, oh, yeah. Asian parenting in general. I do think it having discipline and like, boundaries growing up asian as well like being a part of a group i think it makes people a little more well adjusted to groups as well too versus being too catering to them like your feelings matter too much i'm not saying they don't matter clearly they do matter but they don't trump everything like sometimes like the world goes on right and then so i do th think that being well adjusted is a really good life skill to have if you're not like it, it's it's really difficult for you just that's where like the anxiety comes right and so that's why i think it's good to be uncomfortable and do things you don't want to do all the time yes it it's trains good. yourself trains it's your good nervous to suffer, system yeah. to feel some type of pain yeah that's how you grow totally. and then you have to embrace that and for me comedy was way to get out of my anxiety because anxiety essentially like you're just thinking about you too much yeah and how you feel yeah. and whatever you say oh is it how people are gonna perceive me so it's a lot to do with that I'm, I'm not a psychiatrist or something like that I'm just saying from my experience all right if it doesn't apply to you good for you <laughs> <laughs> so comedy had helped me like I still every time I go out and go on stage it's like I feel like I part like it's dying it's like I'm I'm going to war that type of uh fight or flight mode but I still want to do it so that I think that gained me a lot of confidence and uh eased my anxiety so that can be something people can try and then just pick something you truly love. And even if you're afraid, you still do it. That 
can cure a lot of uh, mental health problems, I feel. You just have to. Because it gets less scary once you do yeah. those things. Once you experience the things, like, oh, okay, I can do this. Yeah, and then it doesn't matter how you had mommy issue or daddy issue. Um, you always going to suffer something in life. Yes, that, that's a part of being mm. human. That Nobody's is life escaping. is perfect. Yes. Oh, totally. There's always going to be stress, struggles, and pain. And if all you do is blame your parents or the environment or whatever, social media, you then, yeah, you're just going to, yeah, your genetics going to die off. That just, yeah, depopulation I mean, again. <laughs> I mean, you can only blame your parents for so long after you become an adult. You're, I mean, you're not, whatever happened to you wasn't your fault, but you're responsible for your life moving forward. How do you want to move forward? And a lot of times the forgiveness, all that stuff, it's not for the other person, it's for you. Do you want a peaceful life? I think, when did I... I think I started healing my relationship with my mom like late 20s, early 30s. I started coming mm -hmm. around and I, I did some coaching classes and kind of learned to communicate better. So that's been really nice. And now my mom's getting older too. And it's so, I used to like make fun of her all the time because she's really funny. She would go off on rants. I would film them, mm -hmm. but on my Insta stories. But now she's she's retired and she's really aged. And I see her as an elderly person Physically, mentally, not as sharp. And so I feel kind of bad. I, I'm, a, I'm sad, actually, because I know she's, it, you know, it hits you at some point. Your parents are not going to be around for much longer. And so I, yeah, I always, I think about that. It's actually one of my biggest fears of, is like losing my parents. And I know it's coming. You know, no, none of us are escaping that. So, yeah. That mentality had helped me to heal my relationship with my parents a lot whenever I feel triggered the first thought was do I want to win or do I want to treasure the moment the limited years I have with them so I swallow my ego and pride whatever they say okay you're right and just move on. Like, what's actually important here? Exactly. What's most important here? The, it, winning this argument is not going to help anything. Absolutely. I try as well, but those closest to you tend to trigger you the most. And I, I oh. found myself recently having some fights. I'm like, oh, damn, who is this person coming out of me? <laughs> you know, and It's I'll, good to have that side to come out a little you bit. Need to, people need to know how much they upset you sometimes. It's important. So, yeah, like with my dad, some stuff came up. And sometimes, of course, my mom annoys me some, like sometimes. Not as much as my sister lives close to them and she worked with them. Her office was literally next to my mom's for 10 years. I said, sis, I don't know how you do this. And she would call and complain all the time because it's a lot. It's a lot to be uh, spending that much time with your parents sometimes. And where I, I have accepted that, you know, having a little space is good for our relationship. And I also noticed that texting with my mom actually works better sometimes than phone call because she she's not the best listener sometimes. I think she tunes out so she doesn't listen. But with a text, she will read it. So it it registers. So instead of being like, why can't you learn to listen? I've just kind of adapted and accepted of like, oh, this is how we communicate best. You know, and... um yeah, so when I go back, I stay at my mom's place. It's actually really lovely. She still she loves, like, cooking for us. House is stocked. It's like Costco up in there. I love, like, <laughs> you need yeah, paper yeah. towels. You need toilet paper. And I'm so grateful for that. But I do think I'm like, oh, my God, she's not going to be around forever. Like, I'm so grateful I have this. You know, she's giving us all this stuff, fruits, <laughs> you know, all the things. And so I've really learned how she shows her love, too, is, you know, different than – um Maybe how I thought a mom yeah. show because you with American, you know, with some like American moms or uh, any other mom that maybe was more gentle with their words. I used to be like, oh, I wish, you know, like I needed that. I, I wanted that. But like you said, I, I see the gifts with my mom. And 
I mean, I've heard some really abusive stories too with some mother daughters, like really bad, which makes, you know, if we want to talk abuse in Spain, like my stuff, nothing compared to some of the stories I've heard. Yeah. You want to share or? You could share because I've heard, go, please. Lord, uh, I've had friends say that their mom uh, when they were growing up, their mom would say shit like, "Oh, you're you're are why are you, why do you dress like that? Are you a whore? You're a slut." And uh, there was one girl in our school. She uh, was dating this boy, which was the fucking most normal shit in the world. But in our culture, that was no no. They will shame you especially those shame the girls the slut name calling was still i think it's still a thing but was so big when i was growing up and she i think um the girl she uh, was dating of this boy and then she like had an abortion and somehow that got out and uh her mom found out stormed to school, kicked her, dragged her hair out of the classroom, kicked her, called her slut whore the whole way, slapped her across the face multiple times in front of hundreds of kids. I, I, I was speechless. I wouldn't know what to do. I, and that was normal to us. That's so sad. And it just, it, it happens all the time. And even when uh, the school principals or teachers find out that, oh, some kids were dating, they would drag them to like every Monday and Friday would have like school recess meeting, some type of thing, every kid in school would go to the playground, recess playground, and have this meeting. And if the school find out some people were dating, they would make them stand in front of everybody and publicly ashamed them for dating. That's Imagine nuts. the trauma, fucking trauma these kids you, had to deal with. You just want to love someone. Exactly. And you get that. It's the most fucking normal shit that puppy love. Now looking back, I wish I had dated more. I wish I, it, now looking back at the little diary I have, it's cute. Those youth time passed by so fast. And just the culture that, or, or I, I don't, yeah, I I don't know if I would say I don't blame the the parents. It's 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 a lot bigger than that, and then just the culture itself uh, made um yeah made made parents to behave like that towards their daughters. But uh, it's just such a shame. I sometimes think about oh, how how is this person doing now. I hope she has the tools and the strength to overcome that, and she's better now. But it it that, takes such that, that kind of trauma is really tough to fully yeah. heal from. Like what? Like Where these did moms, this come from? right? Is so. I mean, it just comes from people who are hurt and unhealed, and they just project it onto you, right? And I, oh my gosh, I can't. Yeah, some of the stories I've heard, I just, I can't believe. Because to me, that even if a mom is tough, she still loves you, right? And then when I hear stories like that, like, what? It makes our mother saint. <laughs> totally. Angels. Totally. And if so if you feel alone that you had a tough mom or if you had some sort of, um, you know, like r bad things that happened, one thing that might help, which helped me, I've done some personal growth programs where people share like stories so it's very vulnerable and some of the stories I would hear in exactly this, like, holy crap, what am I complaining about? Some of these people have been 
raped by family members, like the amount of abuse, like what? And they're here today, you know, like, I'm like, oh my gosh. So you feel a little less alone too. You you might hear stories that are similar to yours too. And you might um, see yourself in those stories. And so you really feel less alone. And I, I found, I found that very helpful and gave me permission to talk about these things a little more. Sure. Yeah, the, um, yeah, the, the, I do hear a lot of, um, cause I was, uh, sexually assaulted and I was too young. I didn't understand. And you kind of bottle that. And until I, as an adult, and then you you share stories like that with amongst your girlfriends. It happens to every single one of my girlfriends. So it has become so normalized. You didn't know. Okay, all right. You just have to protect yourself, I guess. You know, there are predators out there. And then you, and then until I start hearing a lot of uh, other grown women's past uh, s- stories, I'm like, holy fuck. No wonder they're like some shit that carried out into my intimate relationships. I behaved like that and this. And it really makes you feel, one, uh, you don't feel alone. Because to us, the first thing we feel was shame. We did something wrong. And we didn't have the tools to equip ourselves how to deal with that. So you carried out that shame. You either later on hurt people, hurt people, deflect that because it hurts to feel. Or you just so depleted and keep uh, thinking that you're something wrong with you and then, you know, hurt yourself internally. And those were an unhealthy way to deal with this. And by like talking about it, start talking about it, hear other women's story that have overcome this, it it really gives uh, other people that have similar that there are men out there uh, have been sexually assaulted too, and mm-hmm. just talked about less for sure. Um, I think by like sharing more, it, it gives pa- people uh, the power permission permission to overcome this and. Uh, not feel shame again or and un- 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 see that oh I can become quote unquote normal again I don't have to always feel like this and oh it's not my fault that I, sometimes I react in this way but I have the power to correct that pattern of behaviors so that's yeah important absolutely do you have any last words? <laughs> <laughs> last words. <laughs> last words. I always want to have hot pot. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go. That got heavy. I that did. Got That's heavy. one of the Korean spa. Yeah. <laughs>